It appears Morgan Arsenso, after doubling down on his rejection of a two-state solution, pandering to hardliners in his party. Has Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu given up on peace? And should the rest of the world give up on a two-state solution as long as he remains in power? Joining me to debate this is the author of The War on the West, Douglas Murray, and the Palestinian National Initiative leader, Mustafa Barghouti. Mr Barghouti, let me start with you. Your reaction to my interview there with Mark Regev. Well, my reaction is that Mr. Regev speaks about Palestinians have to give up. Give up what? I don't understand. And he wants uh, peace. He wants security without ending the Israeli occupation. He ignores the basic facts, which is that Israel has conducted ethnic cleansing against 70% of the Palestinian people, forcing them to become refugees and is depriving them from coming home for all these 75 years. Second is ignoring that Israel is conducting the longest occupation in modern history, 56 years of occupation of West Bank and Gaza. He's ignoring the fact that we are all suppressed by Israel, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. We are being killed in the West Bank. We are being killed in the Gaza Strip. He, spe he, he speaks about the, that the numbers of, of victims is incorrect. Uh, I mean, this is very silly because I think the health ministry has issued the names of everybody that is killed with their ID numbers and their age and everything. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, what we've heard is the same thing that Israel has been doing for all the last 75 years, repeating the same thing and expecting different results. A very wise Jewish man uh, by the name of Albert Einstein, Einstein said, some, said something very wise. He said, it is absolutely ins it is insanity to keep repeating the same thing and expect different results. Well, actually, Israel uh, thing. Actually, I can tell you he didn't actually say that, but it's a, it's a quote often ascribed to him. But the point is, is there, Douglas Murray. But the point is correct. Okay, I take the point. It, it, he didn't, uh, there's no record of him ever actually saying it. Let, let me ask you, Douglas, about this. You and I debated this a lot. You have a very firm position, completely uh, behind Israel, which I completely understand. Does anything that's going on now in terms of the withdrawal of so much support now from allies of Israel, does any of it give you pause for thought about how this actually ends? Because I'm not sure the Israeli government knows how this ends, and that concerns me. Well, I think the Israeli government knows better than most people, certainly most pundits, about how it might end. Um, I think that there are several things I have to say in reply to Mr. Barghouti, by the way. First of all, when I was on this show last with Mr. Barghouti, uh, he said that he hadn't said something he said, and we actually had to issue a confirmation on the programme subsequently that he had, in fact, said the words that he had denied saying, but that had come out of his mouth praising the so-called martyrs. Um, let me say two other things. Firstly, uh, on the question of the West Bank, I think uh, frankly, in this Israel, person. there are very few people, there are very few people in Israel who believe that even if you can have a two-state solution, now is a good time to talk about it. I was in the Knesset, the parliament, earlier today, and among other people saw the head of the left-wing opposition, Mr. Lapid. He doesn't believe this is a time to speak about a two-state solution. Why? Because if you gave a, a state to the Palestinians, and don't forget, Israel did give a state to the Palestinians in 2005 in the Gaza, and look what we got from it. Uh, the world got its money ransacked, uh, the Hamas leaders uh, making themselves fantastically rich and then sending rockets into Israel. So the first thing is, even the most left-wing figures in Israeli politics don't think this is a good time to talk about the two-state solution because, among other things, it would suggest that there was a reward for the terrorists of October the 7th. And the reward for the actions of that day was to double down on giving the Palestinians yet another state. The second thing that has to be said about that, if I may, is that on the subject of the West Bank, if you go to the West Bank, as I was again the other night, and if you stand in the hills overlooking Israel, you will see from those hills the lights of Tel Aviv, the city I'm standing in at the moment. You will see the lights of Haifa and you'll see the lights of Ben Gurion Airport. Now, knowing what Israel knows about what Hamas did with the Gaza, making it into a military infrastructure and firing rockets at southern and central Israel, why on earth would the Israelis give another piece of territory which they didn't have security over in the West Bank to another Palestinian faction, which would have the ability to fire similar rockets at every single part of Israel. And I need to add one other thing, quickly. 
On the subject of the Palestinian Authority, many people outside Israel seem to think that the Palestinian Authority is, as it were, the peaceable wing of Hamas, or is the sort of Sinn Féin to Hamas's IRA. That is not the case. The Palestinian Authority, as well as being a deeply corrupt entity, which I don't need to tell Mr. Barghouti about, he knows well about that, as well as being a deeply corrupt entity, the Palestinian Authority that is funded by the Israelis, as well as the Europeans, the British, and the rest of the international community, pays salaries to terrorists. It pays salaries to the people you know? who kill people okay, in well, let me... Israel. And All right, that... let me is something absolutely okay. impossible to make peace uh, with. I just I heard Mr. Barghouti use the word disgusting, so, Mr. Barghouti, over to you. It is disgusting. It is well, disgusting. Well, uh, Mr. Mr. Morgan, I think you have to be fair. You can't bring Mark Regev and give him, like, 10 or 15 minutes and then bring another pro-Israeli and uh, make him share the time with me. You have to be fair in giving me enough time because what we've just heard is absolutely rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Just repeating Israeli propaganda, just repeating false, and, and I don't agree with him that he has verified what I said. I don't agree with him totally. And he is repeating the same aggressive and fascist speech. They don't want to state, <laughs> what do they want to do with the 7 million people? Palestinians, 7 million Palestinians live on the land of historic Palestine, equal to the number of Jewish people. What is the solution? They don't want two-state solution? Fine, let's have one democratic state with equal rights for everybody. But no, Netanyahu and his fascist government, he has fascists in his government. He has Smotrich and Ben Gvir, who call themselves fascists. These people don't want to see a two-state solution, don't want to see one democratic state. So their solution is exactly what they are trying to do in Gaza now, which is genocide and ethnic cleansing. Genocide. It is genocide what's happening, because we are talking about 32,000 Palestinian people killed, including those under the rubble, and 64,000 people injured, 63,000 people injured. That is 4% of the population. If that had happened in the United States of America, you would be talking about 12 million people killed or injured. Is that acceptable? OK. Is it, is it not that Israel right, is me... occupying the West Bank? OK, let me Isn't just... Isn't the United States of America saying that there is occupation? OK, the Mr. Bugger, I hear you. The international says there is occupation? I hear you. I'm going to go back to Douglas. Sir Ephraim Mervis, the UK's chief rabbi, has said that using the word genocide to describe Israel's actions in Gaza is an increasingly frequent disingenuous misappropriation of the term. He said the use of the term was a moral inversion which undermines the memory of the worst crimes in human history and designed to tear open the still gaping wounds of the Holocaust. Oh, Douglas, we can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear me, but we can't hear you. There might be a sound. Maybe oh, Douglas, I got you back, I think. <laughs> OK. Um, let me just say, can you hear me now, please? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Let me just quickly say this about the genocide thing. Of course that's the case. Mr. Barghouti likes to throw around the word fascist. Fine, I'll throw it back at you, Mr. Barghouti. Not just a fascist, but an apologist for terrorists. Fine. We can all throw around slurs at each other. But more important is the fact that you said that I had told lies. Smart Unlike you, I don't tell lies. I'll tell you why. I'll fall. tell you why. Unlike you, unlike you, I don't speak out of two sides of my mouth. I'm speaking out of one side of my mouth, and it's direct at you. So let me just correct what you just said. You said what I said were lies. Unfortunately for you, I have here with me the amended Palestinian prisoners' law of 2004. Uh, now, Mahmoud Abbas, who now runs the Palestinian Authority, signed this into law. This means that, it, and I'm quoting Article 2 here, prisoners, anyone incarcerated in the occupation's prisons for his participation in the struggle against the occupation will terrorists. be given a salary by the, by the... Let me finish my point. They that are will freedom be given fighters. a salary by the Palestinian Authority. Oh, you think they're freedom fighters. Well, let me tell you another yes. couple of things then. Because everyone watching pays their taxes, and some of their taxes go to the Palestinian Authority. Here's the budget the Palestinian Authority in 2018. This is the PA's own budget, Mr. Barghouti, so don't lie oh. about that. 
$162 million was allocated to you the Prisoners and Released no, Prisoners no, Ministry. In, in, in 2018, in 2018, approximately $193 million was given by the PA to families of the martyrs. There is an increasing list, depending on how many Jews you've killed, of the amount of money you get. Is the Palestinian Authority doing that or not, Mr. Barghouti? Because I have their budget in my hand. OK, Mr. Barghouti, out of respect uh, for fairness, answer that question. Yeah, but uh, I am sure your guest has to be a bit polite. You, you oh, can't yeah, keep but... saying well, that you can answer that lying. one question. Well, I will answer it. Yes, they, they support the prisoners' families. They support as form oh. of social security support. They support the... I mean, nobody... Oh, even security. if you consider... Even if, even if you consider somebody is, is doing something wrong, you cannot punish his children and his wife in an act of collective punishment. This is That's salaries to the people about. who do no, the no, no, terror, wait, as you well know, Mr. And then the, you said something wrong also. Palestinian Authority really does not... I don't defend the Palestinian Authority, but I'm telling you, 90% of the Palestinian Authority budget comes from taxpayers, from Palestinian people. And only 10% comes from and the Israeli aid. government. Contra and contrary to, no, 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 no. And Israel is pi connect, com committing piracy, stealing our taxpayers' money, preventing health, edu health people from you getting their salaries, the question. preventing the Palestinian you Authority the from. You, you, you shut up, please. Let me answer. Can you shut up? Don't interrupt me, please. Well, you don't or I will answer, be interrupting though, do you, you each time answer. you speak. You shut up. You are not the one who is uh, asking me the questions. You're not the anchor, so shut up, please. And let me answer. I am saying what we'll you are good. Why trying you to do here is to mislead the discussion. Ask. I am the main discussion here is, is there Israeli occupation of Palestinian land or not? If people are occupied, what does international law say? International says law, say, law says that people who are under occupation have the right to struggle against their occupiers. No, no, using no, it forms. doesn't. No, no, it no, doesn't. no, that's what the UN says. You can't deviate the, you can't deviate the discussion. And the, the, the main fact here is that the problem we have is that Israel is occupying Palestinian land. And Israel is oppressing Palestinian people. Since 1967, Israel conducted one million arrests against the seven million people who are living there. How could this be acceptable? Okay. What we uh, see here let, is the let, worst let, no, okay. most I have, difficult I have to argue with. Just, 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 just to be clear, I am. I am. Just to be clear, I am the anchor. Okay. I am the anchor, and I'm now going to Douglas respond to that. Douglas. Two things. First of all, Mr. Okay, Barghouti talks about the Israelis. Mr. Barghouti, let Mr. Murray speak, please. Mr. Mr. Barghouti no, doesn't want to Mr. Barghouti, Mr. Barghouti, let Douglas Murray respond. Don't talk over him. Yeah, OK, fine, please. Mr. Barghouti doesn't want a two-state solution because he doesn't want a Jewish state. He wants the river That's to the sea true. to be a Palestinian state, ruled by him and his corrupt friends. But secondly, he cannot answer the question I've put to him repeatedly. I this is the, the PA budget. It rewards terrorism. And let me just finish, Mr. Barghouti, since I allowed you that right in the end. This budget not only extends to rewarding the people who carry out acts of terrorism against Jews and the families of people who do, thus incentivizing terror, and that's the Palestinian Authority. You the Palestinian Authority the has also now has, the Palestinian Authority has also now committed to pay salaries to the fighters and the terrorists of Hamas from October the 7th and their families. So tell me, please, Piers, or Mr. Barghouti, where is the good negotiating partner on the Palestinian side here exactly? Well, I tell you, I tell you what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to wrap this by saying this. <laughs> I don't think there is a good negotiating party on either side. I don't think you can possibly have peace with Hamas still in place. I don't think we're going to achieve peace with Benjamin Netanyahu in charge of Israel uh, and his hardline right-wing cabinet. With, so with if you want my honest view, I think we need a completely clean broom of leadership um, and that's the only way this is ever going to get resolved. But I appreciate you both for coming on together and debating it uh, passionately. Thank you both for your time. Mr Barghouti, Mr Murray, I appreciate it.